and welcome to the Little Drops of Wonderful podcast. This is a crochet knitting podcast where I share with you everything I've been working on, crochet, knitting, crafty stuff, sewing, all that kind of stuff that I've been up to over the past few weeks. I'm also going to give you an update on the weather because I'm British. That's what we do. <laughs> it's raining. It has been boiling hot at 29 degrees it was here in Kent yesterday in the very southeast of the UK and today it's gone right down to 24 which is still quite hot but it's been pouring with rain all night so at the moment it feels like we're in a rainforest I've just done the school run so this is this is my hair this is my hair today <laughs> my name is Ali by the way and you can find me everywhere where I am on social media as Starry Eyes Alley, apart from here, where I'm Little Drops of Wonderful, and on my other channel where I vlog and talk a lot about just daily life and walks and art, as in dodgy drawing, and that is called This Little Wonderful Life. It's all linked underneath. Show notes um, with links and timestamps. Actually, I'm going to do chapters for this episode. Um, I've worked out how to do that, so chapters are underneath this video if you want to uh, find anything in particular. You might want to come back and find a pattern I talked about or something. That's all underneath. Um, what else do I want to say at the beginning? Uh, oh yes, I've had a ton of new subscribers, so welcome. Welcome if you're a new subscriber and thanks very much for choosing to uh, dedicate a bit of time to watching this. There are so many podcasts out there now so many knitting and crochet podcasts I cannot keep up they are all so good so if you're choosing to spend a little bit of time with me today thank you very much for subscribing and if you are a long-term subscriber well done congratulations on your perseverance <laughs> and for sticking with me um, we're going to have a little chat today about well I've got finished objects written down but in truth I don't really have any finished objects but my cardigan that I've been working on is so it's like three rows from being finished so it's an almost finished thing so we'll start with that um some works in progress um I never talk about the same works in progress it feels like um sometimes I might talk about the same thing over three or four episodes but um I never really um stick to the same thing so today I'm going to focus on socks which I haven't really talked about in a while so Stay tuned for that. I'm going to give you an update on the two make-alongs that we've got running on this channel. One is the Dodgy Bag Mail, which has just come to an end, so I'm going to draw three winners for that, or I already have, I'm just going to tell you who they are. And the year-long Amagurumi along, uh, which is an along for both crochet and knitted 3D things. Um, I've got some projects from your to share with you, which I think you'll find amusing. <laughs> it's like it's like in Mamma Mia 2, I've got I've got an amusing story that I think you will find really, really amusing. It's about a goat. It's not about a goat, it's about bags. Um, I've got some incoming bits. I'm going to have a quick chat with you about books that I'm reading or listening to or bought in a charity shop. <laughs> and then, and finally, at the end is where we just scoop up everything, bit of news, bit of life stuff, bit of everything and say goodbye. All right. Are we on for that? Should we get started with not quite finished objects? Which is, oh, by the way, as well, whilst I dig this out, it was raining so beautifully this morning. It was so lovely to have it sort of finally rain after quite a few days of really dry, hot weather. And it smells amazing. We walk through the woods um, on our school run. So I took some video um, of how lush and wet and you can you can almost uh, watching the video I'm sure you can always smell the the petrichor coming off of the earth so I'm just going to put that in quickly now it's only a few seconds whilst I dig out my almost finished cardigan Isn't that amazing? We're so lucky where we live. We, we are, we, we're sort of half town, half rural. So if you go that way, you end up in the dodgy town centre. You go that way, it's just fields for miles. 
um, and everything is so green. We're reaching that point in summer now where we've kind of passed that kind of initial kind of burst of colour and blooming. We're just sort of moving into that greening of the landscape. Um, yeah, so it smells amazing, even if it's like a rainforest at the moment. So my featherweight cardigan, which I keep calling the feather light cardigan, but I will never now forget it's a featherweight cardigan because someone pointed out feather light is the, is the name of something else entirely. We will just leave that there. It's the featherweight cardigan. It's a pattern by Knitbot, who is Hannah Fetic. I don't know why I'm getting my pattern out because it's really dodgy. Like it's just a black and white pattern that I folded and unfolded a million times. But basically, it's a cardigan. I'm not sure you can make it in any weight. You probably could make it in any weight as long as you knew what you were doing with gauge, which I don't. So I'm making it in the recommended fingering weight yarn. Oh, it says perfect lightweight knit in your favourite lace or fingering weight yarn. It only says that on the front page. I've only been looking at it every day for months. And you can make it any length you want, you can make the sleeves any length you want, and then you can do um, a collar which you just do in stocking stitch, which means it would roll, but I, mm, that would bother me. Or you can do it in a rib, which I'm doing, to make it sit back. And I'm making this as a little throw-on cardigan that I can just have sort of end of spring, beginning of autumn. And to throw on over vests and things which I usually wear. I've just thrown, I didn't even get changed like for the podcast. <laughs> and no, I just threw this on for the school run this morning, but I'm so hot, I can't, I'm too hot to even get changed. It's almost a good thing that this isn't finished because I wouldn't be able to put it on today to show you anyway. So I'm making this with three different colours. So they're all from third volt yarns. I'll get her. Um, little logo out just because I love her logo I love so Lola is the dyer behind third volt yarns she's a UK dyer I just really like that logo every time I see it just makes me just makes me feel cheerful it's just cute um, and basically I bought some of the first hand dyed yarn I ever bought was called Mazakine. that was a colorway name by by third volt yarns uh, it was named for a character in Lucifer, um, which we really enjoyed. And we've just started watching, we've just finished watching season four and we've just moved on to season five. And Mazakin's even cooler in season four and so far in season five. So I love it even more. And the fact that I'm working on this as we're sort of getting back into Lucifer is really good because she's such a good character. She's a demon. Um, so the, the Mazakin yarn was based on her. And then I went to get another one. Um, because I loved it so much but she didn't have the same dye lot so I got another dye lot but they are quite different which you know she she dates her yarn so you kind of know that they're going to be different and then she didn't have any more so I just bought one with like similar tones which was a one of a kind which I think was called coffee coffee and I've just been striping them I think every 16 or 20 rows I've been striping the colours um, and I'm just so pleased with how it's come out. I love these colours. I'm going to end up having to buy more Mazakin yarn. I am obsessed with it. I can, I'd can. i like to make a whole just one colour jumper or cardigan in the Mazakin yarn, which is this one at the top. That's my, the, the one. It's also this one here in the middle. Um, so you can see how different those dye lots are. But they are both beautiful. I wouldn't mind which one I have. Uh, so I'm just on the shawl now. So it's a little tricky to show because it's all bunched up on the needles. I've done the arms to about here, which is how I like my arms. And I, yeah, like I say, I've only got maybe three or four rows and then um, I'll be binding off. And I'm going to have enough of um, the very last bit. Oh dear. That was running away from me there. God, my hair. It was looking quite cool and dishevelled until I went on the school run and now it's just dishevelled. I do apologise. Um, I've got this left of the original Mazakine and I've managed to get, and I've managed to get the whole collar out of it and I've got enough there to do the last bit that I need to. And the good thing is, if I do end up playing yarn chicken when I'm casting off, I could use one of the other two colours just to finish off and I don't think it would notice. 
So I'm so pleased with it. And next time I film, this will be finished and I'll be able to show it to you. I lost my knitting and crochet mojo for a couple of weeks. Um, but I've the, the last few days I have managed to really get back into doing some stuff. So I was really pleased because I was getting worried that it had gone forever. That's how it felt. But uh, yeah, it'll always be a love of mine doing this. I think I've started to question a little bit like my how much creativity I put into it like am I just I, I don't really jump on bandwagons with stuff I do only make what I want to make and what I like and in the colors that I like that's just how I am I'm not very good at just I don't you know following trends I'm not very cool <laughs> um but I just want to make sure I'm still doing that you know it's the things I like and not being imp I don't know what I'm saying I just want it to be a creative process as well as a meditative process. Which makes me sound more deep than I am. Right, so that is my almost finished object, but not quite. It's living in my gorgeous hydrangea bag. Oh, I just love this bag so much. Um, and this is by uh, Inner Pickle, Knit Inner Pickle Knitting, um, who is Donna. And this was a very special gift um, a couple of years ago when my dad died. And yeah. I will always love this bag and the meaning behind it. Okay, I'm looking at the floor where my show notes are. Uh, okay, let's pick them up. I don't wear glasses, but I think I'm getting to that stage because I couldn't read that just then. Uh, okay, so I never cover all of my whips in one episode. So you might see something in one episode and then it won't appear for another few episodes, as I said at the beginning. So I thought I might just do a bit of a sock audit today. So I've gone around and gathered all the socks that I've got in progress and two bags that I've got sort of socks in waiting. And I thought we'd go through those today as something a bit different. So the newest pair of socks that I've got is a change from a whip that you saw last time. So I have a big tub of little French Meadow Minis that I've been saving to work into one single project. Uh, little French Meadow no longer die. I used to be a member of their monthly mini skiing club. And is my um, autofocus doing something weird? Hang on. No, I think we're all right. Anyway, I used to be a member of their monthly mini skiing club and I saved up all the minis and I was gonna put them into one big project. And the perfect project that I've found that I've made before is the Just Feel Better Shawl by Kalisha Ryan of the Quirky Monday podcast. And I was gonna hold all the minis double with mohair, but I started doing it, I was loving it, and then I realized that the mohair was really gonna bother me, um, and it was gonna bother me to an extent where I would never wear it. I also wasn't a big fan of how the colors were coming together. And I do like a good eclectic mix of colors, but even this was bothering me. Even, even this was, but that doesn't make sense, the way I said that. The inflection in that sentence, doesn't it? Anyway, it was bothering me, so I ripped it out and I managed to rip it out successfully. It was a bit of a pain, but I did it. And I've decided I'm gonna turn them into socks, these minis. I'm gonna turn them into really long socks. Um, so I'm doing them top down. Uh, I've only started the first one so far. Oh no, that's not true. I've, I've done about six rows of the second one. And I'm going to work them in the order that I had originally set them out for my shawl, which is kind of a very loose rainbow order. I'm doing them top down so that, uh, and I've worked out how, how many rows by weighing it, I need to stripe them in order that I can have identical socks and still use every last bit of the mini, hopefully. She says confidently, having only done one stripe. So I've done a one by one twisted rib to begin with, which is so neat. I love it. And for the first time ever, I've got some laddering between my DPNs. I always knit socks on DPNs these days. Uh, so I don't know, maybe it's because I was hot or rushing or I don't know. Uh, yeah, so I knit them on three DPNs, holding a fourth to do the knitting. And I'm gonna knit, 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 until I can tell that they're not gonna fit any further up my leg, you know, till you get to that fat bit of the calf. And then I will do the heel. That's how I'm gonna do it. And if I have yarn left over when I've completed the socks, I'm gonna make another pair. Cause I'm sure my eldest daughter, Lilia, would love a pair. Um, she's a big knitted sock fan. 
So that's my plan. I'm doing them on 64 stitches, which I don't normally do. I normally work my socks on 56 stitches. Uh, so they should be a bit bigger than normal as well to allow me a bit more room. So that's the plan. Extra long, little French meadow, crazy scrappy rainbow socks, which are also matching as a pair. And I'm going to keep it in this little tub because actually it's, um, it keeps it all together quite nice and neatly and it's quite nice to look at. And it keeps the bugs away. So that is pair of socks, number one. I'm not using any particular pattern. When I get to the heel, I'll probably refer to a pattern that I've got in my library. Probably something by um, Craft House Magic or uh, Cherry Heart or something like that. Or Mina, Mina of um, Knitting X Pat, she's got, I've got her vanilla sock pattern. Um, it's too hot for tea, so I've got um, orange squash. <laughs> Do you have squash all over the world? It's like cord sugar-free cordial. I've got orange and mango. Right, my next pair of socks is the one that um, I've had on the go for ages um, because I've, I'm in no rush to finish them. They're my um, travelling and waiting room socks. They're living in my bag by my friend, um, my friend Ollie. No, her name's Cherie of Ollie and Bella. I think um, we did a swap a couple of years ago. And I think that was in that swap. Um, it's really beautiful. She knows my favorite color is yellow. And in here I have got yarn that was a gift uh, last year. It was during lockdown, I think, from lovely Jodie. Um, Thank you, Jodie. And it is by my friend Becky, who is back to Blighty. Aren't I lucky to be surrounded by all of these wonderfully creative and generous people? I'm trying to find the tag for the yarn. Here it is. Back to Blighty. It's a mini skein set and it consists of four minis of 20 grams each and Oh, sorry, 25 grams each, and the colourway is Crocus. And these are the socks I keep in my rucksack or my bag um, in case I'm stuck in traffic, in a waiting room, at the doctor's, in the chemist, or any, anywhere you've got to sit and you're like, what am I going to do for the next 20 minutes? I've got my travel knitting. And this is how it looks. I haven't got much progress on them. The other sock, I knit my socks concurrently, so I knit a little bit on one sock and then a little bit on the next and so on. The other sock is about two stripes behind. Uh, so it's lovely plain vanilla knitting. I don't know when I'll go to the heel. I do tend to wear my socks quite short, ankle-ish. Um, so it's probably not far away from the heel. Um, and that's how they look. Just really simple, cute, scrappy socks. Those are the four colours. So I will be going back to yellow when I finish this lavender section. And that's it. Those are my travel socks. Nothing else to say about those other than I'm using DPN Cozies by a viewer of this podcast called Suzanne, who has donated a few bags and, and cozies as prizes in the past. Thank you, Suzanne. And the other one that I'm using, oh, what is this one? I think it's a Sherry Iris one. Beautiful fabric. So those are my cozies. That is pair of socks number two. Pair of socks number three, and the last pair of socks that's actually started is one I mentioned ages ago. It's a pattern I've had for ages. It's called the A Hint of Sophistication Socks, which is by Jen Sheelan. Um, I think it was a prize ages ago on this book. I keep saying ages ago now, don't I? A while ago, some months ago. <laughs> And it is uh, the Hint of Sophistication Socks. And it really made me think of the film French Kiss because the pictures in the pattern, there is, there's glasses of red wine and the uh, it's a sort of simple cable pattern. I don't know if you'll be able to see it from there. I'll put a picture on the screen. That'll be better, I won't get off the finished thing. And there's a line in the film French Kiss where Meg Ryan says something on the line. She's describing a wine and she uses the term a hint of sophistication. I love the film French Kiss. Uh, so these are my French Kiss socks. And I'm using yarn that was dyed for me when I did a swap with Hannah of Hannah from Sheep's Alley. Lovely Hannah. Uh, she's got a podcast, um, Hannah from Sheep's Alley. And she, she's the most creative human that walks the planet. 
and I, I do not say that I am not under, I'm not overselling her there. She is really the most creative human on the planet. And the colourway is called yellow, is there really? And it's a special colourway for Ali. Look, she's got her own little label. Just love it. She doesn't dye yarn to sell, um, it, she, she just dyes it for fun and creativity. So this is sock number one. Oh, and I should show you the yarn, shouldn't I? It's a set. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. So I'm using the yellow just for a very small contrast at the top of the leg. which is a, an idea I think I stole from Sandra of the Cherry Heart podcast. I've seen her do that a few times. Not my own idea. There we go. I've done quite a long cuff. I did 20 rows, which I wouldn't normally. I'm not sure why I did that. I think the pattern said to do that and I just blindly followed. But yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. These are going to be lovely wintry socks. The, the yarn is really kind of fuzzy and rustic. It's lovely. And because it's really hot, my hands get so sweaty when it's hot, like really properly sweaty. I'm just gonna wipe them on my shorts now. Um, there's something about the rustic yarn that is really easy to work with when your hands are sweaty, much easier than say like a softer superwash yarn. And I love rustic yarn for socks and hats and things anyway, but yeah, I've really noticed how it's easier to work with when it's a bit hot and sticky. So you can probably just see, I think I've done three repeats of the cable pattern now. So it's just starting to emerge. But I think for this one, especially as the yarn is a little bit speckled, we're going to need a little bit more. We're going to need to show a little bit more leg before that pattern starts to present itself properly. Oh, but these are going to be lovely. They are going to be so gorgeous, these socks. And I'm knitting them on Smart Sticks. They are uh, Knit Pro Smart Sticks and I love them. They've got measurements on them so that you can, it's supposed to help you measure gauge. I've never used them for that reason. But they're really lovely to knit with. They've got like they they're not they're a bit grippy. I really like them. Really, really like them. So that's what I'm using to make these socks. And my yarn cozy, by the way, was a lovely gift from a podcast viewer in a beautiful yellow colour with yellow snaps. And the other one for the second sock, which I haven't started yet, is this beautiful little thing, cloud DPN holder, and that is by Eva of uh, Coco and Flora podcast. She makes the most amazing things. Another creative human. So that's a pair of socks number three. And then very quickly and finally, I wanted to talk about two bags that I found with socks in ready to go, which I'd just forgotten about. So I've got this one where I've got the pattern from Nordic Stitches. Two patterns actually, three. I've got Sea Foam, Mermaid, and sand between my toes. These will have been from her, I think, Summer Beach Shorties collection. I know that I'm saying that wrong. She's got loads of money off of her patterns at the moment, all dick stitches. No, it doesn't say, but I'm pretty sure she's got um, like a, a Summer Beach Shorties collection, um, which these are from. And I've got those because I was gonna make uh, them with this yarn that I hand dyed with the girls. <laughs> using Kool-Aid uh, specifically. I think it was Phoebe did these. So they're just plain yarn that we dyed with Kool-Aid and I was gonna make her a little pair of socks with that. Ooh, just dropping everything. And then I've got another yarn in here that I think I was th thinking of for Lilia. Ooh. I'm pretty sure this is called Searching for Seagulls. I'm pretty sure. And this is one that I dyed that I used in my Waru shawl. And I was going to make her a pair of shorty socks with these. This is sparkly. And that is all living, but not being worked on, in one of my own doggy bags. Which is this one. Made with a pair of old jeans and some lovely fabric. And I've got a lovely little pin there. That was a gift from Chris. Thank you, Chris. It's it. Knit stitch repeat. Knit pearl repeat, it says. And that little um, flower thing there was... Um, a present for my lovely friend Lorraine, who you may remember as con oh, she's consciously crochet now, but she was Lorraine Pew Designs, but she doesn't podcast anymore. But she's a beautiful human. And finally, you have seen this before if you're a long term viewer. 
in my lovely lobster bag. This was a gift one Christmas for my mother-in-law. Um, I was working on a pair of socks using this gorgeous yarn called, I think it's called Sun, Sea and Shale. It was a gift from my friend Sarah. I seem to say, say two things this podcast. It was a gift from, because I'm spoiled, I'm a spoiled brat, and um, ages ago. It was a gift from my friend Sarah. I can't see the yarn ticket. I don't know what I've done with it, but I think it's called Sun, Sun Sea and Shale, and it's by Down Sheepy Lane. It's a self-striking colourway sock set um, it's all wrinkly because it was socks and I unraveled it because they were the gauge was all wrong and I'd left them so long that I don't work at that gauge anymore so you can't really see it but they're, it is beautiful um, self striping yarn and I was working on them during a time when my dad was very very unwell um, and dying from brain cancer and um, I, I couldn't work on them anymore I just put them away it, it was too many memories I know I want them to be socks and I know I want to turn them into socks. I know I do want to finish it and complete it. But I don't know, I've just had a bit of a... It's funny, isn't it, with crafting and knitting and doing art and things. You you, you, you take in the things that are going on around you and it goes into that thing. You kind of freeze it in there. So I think I'm ready to work on these now. And I'm wondering if I might take them away on holiday with us to Scotland when we go in August. As something to work on in the car and just put some new memories in. I know I've talked about this before, putting new memories in them. I talked about it at the beginning of last year, uh, but I think it's time. And that is all my sock whips. Should we have a little chat about the make-alongs we've got going on? If you're not um, joining in with any of them, don't worry, because I'm gonna talk about a few other things around them that you will find interesting, even if you're not taking part. So the first one is my accidental year long along, which was supposed to be just at the beginning of this year, but it was so much fun, I extended it to the end of the year. It's the El Dow Ami along, and it is a make-along for crocheted and knitted 3D things. So creatures, amigurumi is traditionally crocheted cute creatures, but um, knitted things are welcome as well. And there are so many things popping up on Instagram uh, in the hashtag and so many things in the Ravelry thread. It's just, I love it so much. So I've taken a few of my favorite ones that have popped up recently on Instagram to share with you. So we've got um, Eduardo. Let's move over here so I can put a picture up. Eduardo the Baby Dino. That is by the person whose name is on the screen because I i can't say that. <laughs> um, and I just thought that was just so cute. And then these two hedgehogs by Crafty B83. They're a pattern by one of my favorite Amigurumi um, designers, which is Ilaria Kaliri. And she's Ereli Gray on Instagram, the designer. How amazing are those? I just, they, and then also, not long after that I spotted the Frida Kahlo Amigurumi by Claudia who is Sunbird Crochet. Just amazing and there were so many more amazing um, amazing creations popping up on that hashtag and in Ravelry. So if you've never given Amigurumi a go go and have a look there's loads of people talking about it and helping each other out and just generally being brilliant. So definitely go and have a look there's so much inspiration and I want to make everything. So I'm gonna, I've got a couple of crochet pattern books, which um, I'm gonna use as prizes as we go. Uh, and I think every time I will um, maybe do a, a gift the winner a, a pattern, an amigurumi pattern as well. So I think last time it was um, the dabbling hook octo. Yeah, that's one of my favorite amigurumi patterns. Uh, the next prize draw I will do at the end of June. Did I just? say that already anyway it'll be at the end of june so the next episode basically and i have an ami pattern as well i have written a pattern which again makes me sound better than i actually am so i've been working on my little drop of wonderful pattern um and the idea behind it so this is how he looks this is this was my first prototype and this is my second prototype <laughs> i'm just using cotton that i already had available to me i didn't want to go out and buy yarn because I've got cupboards, cupboards full of cotton yarn. Um, so this is um, Aran weight and this is a uh, DK weight and I'm going to make one in a fingering weight or four ply as well to give you an idea of the different sizes you can get just by changing your hook and 
Yarn. I work them at a really tight gauge to make them nice and squishy without the stuffing coming out. And the idea behind them is you can make them just cute little fringe, you can put your safety eyes on and all of that, or if you don't put safety eyes on them and you embroider them in a slightly dodgy fashion, there's a little laughing face. <laughs> I have to perfect my um, face designs. I will, because I want to include it as ideas in the pattern. And this one's just got a basic little sleepy face. But because they don't have plastic eyes, you can use them as dammit droplets or stress droplets, which means you can squeeze them when you are feeling stressed or if you're really angry and you just, uh, and you want to throw something, you can throw it. You can even throw it at the window. Doesn't break the window. No plastic eyes. So, but they're over there now. <laughs> but that is my pattern. The pattern is written. I'm just finalising it. I've got a couple of lovely people testing it for me. And then I'm going to release that at a really, really low price. And there will be a free video tutorial at some point later in the year for it as well. Um, yeah, so that's the idea. I've got another pattern as well, which is my crochet mitts pattern, which I should probably have talked about in Works in Progress. Um, but I talked about it at length in my last episode, so I'm not going to go into it greatly other than to say they look like this it's a really simple mitten pattern it's gonna be free and it's gonna be alongside a tutorial a sort of basic um, crochet mitt tutorial on this channel um, I've got a couple of people that have tested it for me um, and I might make a small adjustment to the pattern just in I'm really happy with this because I wanted them to be little literally little hand mitts but a few people have said they would prefer them to be a bit longer so I might alter the pattern or I might just include instructions um, for how to make them longer if it's an option there's a lot of ways you can modify this isn't that yarn gorgeous it's called Land of Make Believe it's a DK yarn by Ellie at Craft House Magic so these are my mittens this will be completely free as will the tutorial um, it's just taking me a while to get it all together just because life, work, parenthood, hot weather. But stay tuned because they are coming soon. My other make-along that I've got going on is the Dodge, well, it's just finished actually, it's the Dodgy Bag Mail 2021, which I've been running for the last three or four years with Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast. She has drawn her winners already. Um, I think she drew them on Instagram, not sure. I don't think she's done it in the podcast. And uh, we both agreed to draw one winner from the hashtag and one winner from the um, FO stroke chatter thread. So she's done that and I've done mine this morning. So my IG winner, so there was over 100 posts on Instagram using the hashtag, which was brilliant. I don't know any more than that because Instagram doesn't tell you exact numbers unless it does and I don't know where to find it. It's a bit annoying. So what we do when drawing an Instagram winner is we scroll at random through up and down, up and down, up and down. And then Phoebe either randomly puts her finger on it or chooses one she likes the look of, which is what she did this morning. She chose this bag, which is a bee bag. It is by lovely Alice, who is Alice Close Knit. Um, and Alice, you have won the beautiful bag that was donated as a prize by Barb. It's this blue one. It's very fitting. Fitting that we have bag prizes for all, all of the prizes for this now, uh, from me anyway. Um, that's by Barb, this is her card. She is Bags from the Bay. There we go. And she's also included um, the most beautiful handmade beaded stitch marker Isn't that lovely so that is absolutely brilliant so that is what you have won i'll put that all to one side i've already got your address um alice i think but um could you just drop me an email um email is best for all the winners it's little drops of wonderful at gmail.com in fact that is the best way to get in touch with me at any time because instagram messages just drive me up the wall because that you lose them so easily and you can't search them uh, and with Ravelry messages I'm so I'm a bit overwhelmed with them I've got over 90 sitting in my inbox at the moment 
I'm very bad at keeping up with them. So if you haven't heard back from me, I'm really, really sorry. But if you keep it to the email, I tend to be able to get back a li in a little bit more of a timely fashion, but I'm still rubbish, for which I apologise. <laughs> so you've won that, Alice. Well done. And then the next winner was from Ravelry. Um, and that was... Uh, I just did that with a random number generator. It pulled out 183. That is J Poren. J Poren. And that is Jill. And you're in Chicago in the United States. And I'm very sorry, Jill, but you've won a dodgy bag. I, ca I, I don't know how to apologise enough. It is the dodgy bag, Mal, after, after all. So this is the dodgy bag that you have won. Um, this is the subject of my new bag tutorial. I've got two bag tutorials on this channel, a zipper bag and a drawstring bag, and I get really good feedback on them, which just blows my mind slightly because I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> but this one I made up when I wanted to make a really quick, nice little bag that would be a good sock bag and good for a gift. So there's no box bottom, it's just a curved bag and it's just a self-drafted shape as well and I tell you in the tutorial how to do every single element of it including how to do the dodgy little um, tabs on the um, drawstring. It is really dodgy and if you watch the tutorial which should be up not long after this podcast if not before um, you will see all the errors and things that I make so Jill, I'm really sorry, but you have won the dodgy bag, which is the subject of my new tutorial. And I will pop a couple of my pins and other bits and things in with it as well. If you could just get in touch with me via my email or Ravelry if it's easier um, and with your address and I will get that sent out to you. Well done, Jill. Uh, and then I thought that would be it. But lovely Nicola, who is Nicola Knits, who has been really active in the mail, in the make along, um, got in touch to say she'd like to donate one of the bags she made for the mail as a prize. It's, um, it's like a, a, a box bottom drawstring bag where the box seems to be, where the bottom seems to be sturdier than the top. I can't describe it, I'll put a picture up. It's beautiful. She made loads of bags for the make along um, and she donated that as a prize. So she's gonna send that directly to the winner. So again, I use random number generator to draw a winner. It pulled out Nicola Knits. <laughs> So assuming, Nicola, that you don't want to win your own bag, <laughs> I drew another winner. And that, that time it was number 642, who has the best username of all time. Bar, 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 bar. <laughs> There's no name or details about you. You are mysterious. Maybe you are actually a sheep. I mean, that would make sense. That would explain why there's no details about you. And that's, your, that's all you could type. Bar, 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 bar. That must be it. Okay, so a sheep has won um, the bag from Nicola. So if you could get in touch with me, bar, 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 <laughs> and let me know who you are uh, and which field you live in on which farm, and I will have Nicola send that bag to you. So thank you very much, Nicola, and thank you to everybody who joined in. It's always such a fun make-along. So many people join in, and you're all so creative, and the patterns that come up that you use and the ideas that you have and the fabric it's just, it's just lovely. I love the dodgy bag mail. It makes me so happy. I did manage to make some, actually. Well, this moves on nicely to projects from your. Yeah, okay. So I made that yellow one for the prize and for the tutorial. So that counts. I also made Dan um, a project bag, which I forgot to put interfacing in. So that counts, because it's definitely dodgy if I've forgotten to do something. And then I also made... Um, another one which I sent to a friend and then this one with a pair of Dan's old jeans um, which I lined with this lovely fabric from which, which was a gift from Ruth and I did the drawstrings to match that so I'm really pleased with that I don't know if I'm going to keep this one or I might actually put it in the pile for giving away or as a prize or something um, and again that was with my little um, really simple drawstring pattern which I've done the tutorial for. So I made that. So those are my contributions to the dodgy bag now. And then that leads me on to projects from your, which I haven't done in ages where we look and quite often laugh at things I've made in the past. So this time I thought we'd look at some bag, the dodgy bags that I've made in the past as our project from your. 
I found the first bag I ever made. Now, I should have researched this and actually looked up the patterns. So I'm just going to do that now. Oh, that took me a while. I had to go right back to my old blog. <laughs> many, many moons ago I used to blog. It's called Snip Snap Happy. It's still out there. I'll link it underneath. Um, the pattern I used was by Tiny Happy, Melissa Wastney. Um, I will link it underneath. It's her shoulder bag tutorial and it's the first bag I ever made. I made it with fabric from Ikea and this is what it looks like. I, I don't really use it. It'd be a good little bag for taking out on a day out. I might keep the camera and stuff in it quite well. So it's just a really simple bag and you make it um, in kind of two halves and then at the end you kind of sew, the, you turn it out through a, a gap in the handle and then you sew it together, which I've done really badly, so badly, I'm not going to show you a close up. And then I've just done it in a yellow lining, I've got a gigantic um, button on it and I've even whoop, got a pocket on the inside, check me out, check past me out. Yes, so yeah, I was really pleased with that. I remember at the time just not being able to quite believe that I had sewn a bag. So this was where it all began. This is my very first bag. Um, and then I moved on and after I started that, I didn't stop. I made tons of tote bags, shopping bags, stuff I still use on a daily basis now that I've just really, one of my favorite things I ever made and I'll put a picture up of it and the link to the pattern um, and the name. <laughs> Just everything that I can't currently remember is a denim bag. I made it out of a pair of my literally my favorite pair of jeans I ever had. I lined it with an organic cotton. I use that all the time. I use that like nearly every day for carting stuff about. I throw it in the washing machine. It's the best bag I've ever made. And I, I don't think I've ever shown it on the podcast. Um, but yeah, that is fabulous. So I definitely highly recommend that pattern. These two were made up entirely. Uh, they're just tiny little tote bags made with old, this was an Ikea fabric, this was an old curtain fabric, and they're both just lined with plain. I think at the time I was thinking they'd be handy for shopping, which they are, uh, but the opening is a bit too small for the size of the bag. But they are handy for things like if you're getting fruit and veg, because um, we don't use any of the plastic bags and stuff anymore. These are perfect for bunging them in before we go through the self-service. Um, but I've been clearing out stuff, I've had a, been just having a massive life clear out, which at the moment means my house is a complete mess because there's stuff on its way out or into different locations all over the place. Um, and these were in uh, the ottoman in our front room. So I'm actually going to put them in my car now to start using them more regularly. So they actually get used rather than just sit in a box. And then finally, this is the Starflower bag. I really love this. Um, it's a pattern by Sam, who is Betsy Makes. Is it a paid for pattern? Yeah, it's five pounds. Yeah, the Starflower bag by Samantha D, who is Betsy Makes. And it's a corner to corner crochet bag pattern. And she gives you all the instructions for making the outer bag, um, and how to uh, make the lining and attach it. I've lined it in yellow, obviously. And I think she did it, it was part of a festival thing where you could make the bag in advance of going to festival and I, I can't remember what it was, but I, I remember I made it and I took it to festival. And I attached for my straps um, some little D-rings with the, you know, the lobster clasps, like that so that I could change out the handle whenever I wanted because at the time I wanted a good substantial come on camera here I am um a good substantial um handle and I didn't have one so I've just used some plain cotton webbing and I haven't got around to replacing it um but at any time I want to replace it I can do so really easily because I could just cut this off and then sew on a popper thing. And I think at the time it must have been around November because I've got my poppy. <laughs> I've got my poppy here. And I did some little embellishments, little cotton embellishments, which could do with a bit of blocking, to be honest. But I love this bag. I love the colours. I love the design. I love how sort of nice it is. Yeah. Give you. A... I don't know. That was just me 
shoving my boobs in the camera really wasn't it I, was, I don't know what the point of that was but yeah I really love it I remember at the time really enjoying making it and it, it was you know it was a bit challenging because yeah anything we have to do a lining it's always a bit challenging but I really loved it and it came out really neat and the instructions were obviously really good because I'm not usually this neat a sewer when it comes to lining so I can only put that down to Sam's instructions and not me so that's the starflower bag so that those are my projects from your I've got some incoming stuff to share which I haven't done much of in a while so that's exciting but I needed to issue an apology first because in the last episode when I was talking about incoming stuff I said that the lobster bag and the Whitaker's chocolate were from lovely Lizzie who had sent me some lovely yarn as a gift and I put them all in the same box but the chocolate and the lobster bag were actually from Angela in New Zealand Lizzie lives in the UK not in New Zealand <laughs> afterwards when I watched it I was like I've got that wrong didn't I and then Angela commented and I was like yeah I got that wrong so anyway I messaged them both I'm very sorry for getting you mixed up and getting it all wrong so the lovely lobster bag that was made out of a tea towel and the gorgeous Whitaker's chocolate which is no longer around were from Angela who lives in New Zealand and the gorgeous yarn was from Lizzie who lives in the UK I'm really sorry I'm just so overwhelmed at the moment I think I just get all confuddled anyway not getting today's ones mixed up I got some lovely yarn from Christina and Nina oh and they are Burke and Berg, they are yarn dyers on Finn, which is an island in Denmark, which I remember when we went to Denmark in 2018 was somewhere we would have really liked to visit, but we weren't in that part of Denmark. Um, anyway, they're yarn dyers and they sent me two skeins of yarn. They said I can keep it or give it away or use it as prizes or whatever I want to do. For now though, I'm just keeping them. Look how lovely it was when I opened it. A little posh yarn present lovely um, and they put in a lovely note oh here's the card so Burke and Burke and that's their contact details obviously in Danish because they are Danish I have a bit of a love affair with Denmark um, I wanted to go for many 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 years and then in 2018 we finally did and it was the best holiday it was the most wonderful country to visit and we were going to go back we were going to go back like but like we were going to go back in 2019 but we ended up going to visit family in Scotland uh, and it was all planned we were you know we had things we were going to go back 2020 2021 we haven't been back and we all know why <laughs> But we will, we will one day. Anyway, stop yabbling. The yarn. We've, I've got to... Ooh, it's really impossible to choose which one I like the most. I don't know whether to keep... Um, to give them both away so I don't have to make the decision. Because I don't know how to decide. This one is Merino Single. It is such... It's such a lovely colour. It's called Party All The Time. Look at that neon colour. Look at that yellow. What is it about speckles? Why do we love those speckles so much? I don't know, but we do. So that is party all the time. And then this gorgeous one, which couldn't be like more different. It's a really lovely subdued autumnal lovely colour. It's called gold. My Danish is very bad, but I think it means gold. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, it's lovely. I think I'm leaning towards this one, you know. I can imagine this would make an amazing pair of socks or hat. This one is not a merino single. This one is a sock yarn. It's an 80-20 merino wool nylon. So thank you so much, Christina and Nina, for that. I'm going to pop that in my box of prizes and giveaway things um oh camera's overheating let's tell you about the next thing i've got incoming and then we'll let my camera cool down for a minute i had a parcel of lovely things from a viewer of this podcast called angie hi angie i'm not going to show you everything she sent oh she sent me the most gorgeous lobster fabric and stickers and some bookmarks and things but she sent the most 
gorgeous yarn. It was from a farmer's market, which is nearby to her in Virginia. Did I write it down? Yeah, from a nearby farmer's market where she lives in Virginia. And she'd see, oh, it smells amazing because there's lavender in this. And she'd seen this yarn and she said, you know, um, I've chose some for you. I think if I'd been at that market, I would have chosen this myself. It is lovely. It's 100% wool, don't know what type. It's called Grandview Farm. I don't know if that's where the farmer's market is. And it's, oh, it's the most rusticky feeling yarn. And I've got three skeins of it. Uh, four ounce. Now, my little UK brain can't work that out, four ounces. But it looks about 100 grams. I haven't weighed it. Anyway, I've got this one, which is called Cranberry. It's got this lovely rainbow, very appropriate for this month. Rainbow um, stitch marker. So that's Cranberry. And then this one is Dark Sheep's Grey. And this one has got lobster stitch markers on it. Angie knows me well. Slightly obsessed with lobsters in this house. <gasps> Look at that colour. That is coming out very accurate. And then this one is called Raspberry and has, um, oh, it's a paint palette with paint brushes. Oh, you do know me well, Angie. And look at that kind of heathered colour. <gasps> oh my goodness. If I could. If you could scratch and sniff the screen, this would smell so beautifully sheepy and lavendery. You all know that smell. Well, happy place smell. What to make with it? I don't know. It's two ply yarn and it says gauge. Quantities for average adult, medium sized sweater, six skeins. Oh, here we go. 210 yards a skein. So that makes it a DK weight, I think. I think that makes it a DK weight. Yeah, it looks about a DK weight. Thank you, Angie. Right, I'm gonna let turn my camera off. You won't notice because it'll only be but a millisecond. I'm gonna turn it off for 10 minutes and just sit here and sniff yarn. Oh goodness me, that was a bit longer than 10 minutes, and also I foolishly just ate half a digestive biscuit. So now it's all stuck in my teeth. The school called whilst I was um faffing about and waiting for the camera to cool down. Uh, Lilia's school, my oldest daughter, because I emailed them yesterday. They've all had to start wearing masks again because we've had a Delta variant outbreak in our village, <laughs> which sounds quite alarming. But if I tell you that in our village, we have one lane that runs through the very middle of the village. And on that lane, we have three huge secondary schools or high schools. Um, there were, there's a boys grammar school, a girls grammar school and the... Um, mixed academy that Lilia goes to and in the grammar schools they've had many um, cases of the Delta variant and they've actually set up a mobile PCR testing unit and now they're discovering loads of people with the variant that are asymptomatic it's a whole big thing anyway as a result of this they've stepped up Covid measures um, in the area more than they were they were beginning to relax a bit and the academy where Lilia goes um, I have to wear masks again and Lilia suffers hugely from hay fever and allergies most of the year but in particular this time of year because it's summer and she can't breathe through her nose um, not because it's stuffed up but because it's swollen have I told you this already I feel like I've told you this already if I'm repeating myself I apologize anyway that was her teacher calling to have a, a word with me the head of year and he has been very, very reassuring and very sensible about it. So that's brilliant. You don't need to know any of that. What are we talking about next? Where's my show notes gone? What's happening? I walk away for 10 minutes. I've got no idea what's going on. Seriously. Where's my show notes? Am I sitting on them or something? Oh, they're here. Okay. Books and stuff. This is where we talk about things I'm reading, things I'm listening to, blah, 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 all book related. Oh dear. Um, it's so hot at this stage that we have a social club opposite ours that's used for all kinds of different things. But during the day it's used as the local toddler group. Even they have got all the windows open and they never open the windows. I've, I don't think I've ever seen those windows open on the social club, but they're all wide open. Um, I bought a new book. We went for a day out 
uh, the girls and I, we went down to Margate on the Kent coast, which is not something I particularly wanted to do because it was busy, but they really fancied it. They love Margate. They've got a lot of memories of visiting there over their childhood. And um, so we went for a little wander around. Um, if I got, I did take some film and if I've got some decent footage of that, um, and I've got time, I will pop that in at the end of this podcast for you to have a little look at. Um, but if it's not there, it's because I have deemed it unworthy. <laughs> um, and there's a great charity shop there that's just books. It's a charity bookshop, all secondhand books. And we went in there and the girls both chose something. And I found this book. Um, it's Station Jim. And it's by Louis de Bernier, who wrote Captain Corelli's Mandolin, which was a huge thing in the 90s. Um, we read Captain Corelli's Mandolin, I think it was uh, the year before we got married, I read it. We went to Kefalonia on holiday for our first holiday together, Dan and I. Um, and I still remember snippets of that story. Not so much the film. <laughs> Let's not talk about the film. But he's got this, and it's a children's book, Station Jim, and it's got this most amazing illustration. And the blurb on the back says... One evening in early spring, in the days when all the trains were driven by steam, a station master found something abandoned on a train. And just in case you're wondering, the thing he found, finds abandoned on a train is a puppy. <laughs> so I bought it thinking this would be a lovely story um, to read with Phoebe, who loves animals and books. And it's got the illustrations in here are done by Emma Chich Chichester Clark. And there are illustrations throughout it and they really remind me of Raymond Briggs. They're not exactly the same but they, they're really rem reminiscent of Raymond Briggs type illustration which I really love. Raymond Briggs, just in case you're trying to place the name, is the illustrator behind the snowman. Yes, I'm really looking forward to maybe reading this on my own or reading it with Phoebe. And I, it was just such a lovely find, I think it was a pound. Yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. Looks like it might be a wintry tale. There's snow on the front. I am also still currently reading um, The Valley of Horses. There's my bookmark, so you can see where I am. There we go. I'm not far. It's a really long book. I only really read in the, at night when I go to bed, so I don't get a lot of reading done in the day. So it does take me a while to read things, especially when they're this big. Uh, but I'm really enjoying the story. Um, the main character Ayla has now met John Dondala, as she calls him, and is learning to speak. And it's really the the story has really picked up a lot of interest. It's an amazingly detailed book, especially about the time and the planet as it was back in that prehistoric time. And um, is prehistoric the right word? I'm not sure it is. Look, I'm going to show my ignorance here, aren't I? It is the right word. Earth's children, prehistoric Europe during the Ice Age. There we go. I was right. <laughs> Maybe I should cut the bit out where I'm doubting my intelligence. <laughs> um, but yeah, the detail is amazing about the animals and the flora and the, like, the medicinal use of plants and stuff. It's, it is incredible. And the story is really good, but there were parts of it. There was one part of it where I thought, thought I was reading a boat building manual. <laughs> Um, but that very quickly passed and it was well worth it just to get to the part of the story I am now. It's really picked up. I look forward to going to bed to read a bit of my book. I'm also still reading with Phoebe the, um, uh, what do you call it, the shorter version. So it's, right, so in my car I'm listening to and have been listening to for some time the audio version of Black and British by David Olasoga. It is brilliant. I've got about seven hours remaining now. It's a really long book. It was over... I think it's like 25 hours or something but I'm up until uh, up to sort of late 1800s early 1900s now so it's getting more recent Charles Dickens has turned up um, in the history of what he's talking about it focuses a lot on history of slavery and sort of Britain's role in, in being involved in the slave trade and bringing an end to the slave trade as well and it was the, the our involvement in it and our involvement in the ending of it, it are both things I knew absolutely zero zilch nothing nada about nothing nothing not stuff we learned in school it has been an incredible um education and a, re a really really brilliant book it's brilliantly written for a start and the guy that reads it reads it brilliantly 
Um, his name is Colbert Holbrook Smith. He's um, an, a British actor, British Ghanaian actor. And yeah, his, his reading of it is amazing. And, and you need someone to be amazing. I've said this before. If it's a 25 hour long book, you need to like the person's voice. <laughs> um, but in a, a, in, alongside that, I have been reading um, every now and then in the evening with Phoebe, Black and British, A Short Essential History, which I actually bought for Lilia. Um, and she does want to read, but while she's reading something else, Phoebe and I are working our way through it. So this is the shortened version, sort of young adult version or kids version of Black and British. Um, the full title of which is Black and British, an essential history, I think. And this is a short essential history. If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself on the screen. So that's what's being read as well. Also, I'm listening to my latest audio book that I've been listening to as I've been doing the housework and stuff is Back to Nature by Chris Packham and his stepdaughter, Megan McCubbins, I think her name is. Um, and it is all about nature, UK nature, wildlife, um, thing, the, the crisis. I think how they described it is a last stand for nature and it's Chris Packham explaining some of the stuff that goes on in the country that is not good for wildlife, the stuff that goes on that is good for wildlife and it's interspersed with Megan who's a zoologist giving you really detailed information about things like um, how ladybirds fly, how certain birds um, sing, um, how certain things in nature are constructed and why they're important and it really really works, it's fascinating. Chris Packham is a really interesting person to listen to um, and I think on the back of this I'm going to go and have a look at his other books because I've really really enjoyed it and it's been a very eye-opening about what is going on to do with um, climate change and the things we are doing to our planet which are not okay. I'm learning a lot about it and I would highly recommend it particularly if you're in the UK and have an interest in wildlife, which we all should, because if we don't have insects and we don't have bees and we don't have wildlife, we won't have food and we won't have humans. So there you go, that's what I'm listening to. Am I listening to anything else at the moment? I don't think so. I'm still listening to the Stub and Light of Things podcast that was recorded last year, um, and I'm listening to it kind of in real time. So when she would have released it last year, that's when I'm listening to it this year. Wonderful. I might go back and just start listening from the beginning because it's the most wonderful thing I've listened to in a long time. This, I'll, I will link all of these things that I'm talking about underneath. Finally, we are at unfinally. There are just a few things to tell you to mop up this uh, lengthy crafty chat. Uh, the first thing is that Phoebe's tree pins are back in stock. I've just moved to one side because I know I've got a little video that I can put in to show you because I don't have one up here, of course, because I'm not that organised. Phoebe, my youngest daughter, designed this uh, beautiful little pin and um, they, the first lot that we got was completely sold out, um, which she couldn't quite believe, um, but we've got a big batch now, so the shop is fully stocked with tree pins if you would like to get one. Uh, they are a really nice size, they're smooth epoxy and they're just a really lovely little message. And if you don't um, want to get the enamel pin version, there are uh, lower cost badge versions available too. So that's all there is to say about that. Uh, there's also the usual little drops of wonderful pins in the shop and I've got postcards now as well that say you are a little drop of wonderful. Um, if you want to share that with your, some people you think are little drops of wonderful. I've been tagged as well. I've been tagged by my friend Sarah, who is Yarn Mugs. She has the Yarn Mugs podcast to talk about six projects on my crafty bucket list for the rest of this year. Now I think we can all agree I've probably got enough projects already on the go that would last me not just this year but the rest of the decade if not beyond but if I had to pick something on my bucket list this is what they would be. Number one wreaths from Crocheted Wreaths and Garlands by Kate Eastwood. I've spoken a couple of episodes ago about how I want to be that person with that house that always has a seasonal or themed wreath hanging in the window or on the door. I haven't started that yet, but that's on my bucket list. 
Another, number two, another knitted garment. I've loved making that featherweight, card, featherweight cardigan so much that I want to make another one. I want to make another, either another featherweight cardigan or another cardigan of some kind. I wear cardigans more than I would sweaters. So that is on my crafty bucket list. Number three, I want to make a gigantic, cuddly, cosy, yellow, granny square sweater. I've got a load of four ply yellow yarn that I have been given as gifts or bought myself. I've got loads of different shades of yellow. And I was looking at them the other day when I was doing some of my clearing out and I was thinking, do you know what? I could put all of these yellows together and make just the most spectacular <laughs> crocheted granny square sweater that I could wear. And I quite like it to be V-necked and quite baggy. Something I can just imagine myself, you know, beautiful in a beautiful living room with like soft blankets and a hot chocolate in my very stylish yellow granny square sweater what do you think so that's number three number four socks just socks um i've had a bit of a sock drought lately i haven't been working on them i know that i've just talked about socks um but i really want to start working on socks i wear them i wear them all the time not at the moment it's so hot but that, the rest of the time that's what I wear hand knitted socks and my daughter Lilia she loves them I don't make them for her enough Dan really likes them I could make them for him I could make them as gifts I don't make enough socks and I've got several that have been on my wish list to make for a little while um just about all of Marcy's of Hay Brown Berry's sock patterns intersections and pebbles and pathways are two that are in my library I'd really like to make both of those I'll link all these underneath so you know what I'm talking about. I really want to make the Crunkled Socks by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, lovely Kay. Um, and I want to make another pair of Drippity Drop Socks because I made a pair of Drippity Drop Socks um, a year or so ago and I, they are my favourite socks, absolutely hands down my favourite socks. So I want to make another pair of those before I wear out the first pair. I've got a ton of socks that I want to make by Nordic Stitches. I know I've already mentioned those um, ones, those shorty socks earlier. Um, and there's loads more in my library, but I just want to make the socks that are in my library that I've got and you know Yeah, so that's definitely on my on my bucket list number five my Ziggy interrupted <laughs> Which is a, like a wrap pattern by Sandra Paul of Cherry Heart Which I seem to have had a kind of mental block with I kind of started it and then went Oh, I can't cope and just put it all away and like shoved it behind something in case it came back to get me or something. I need to find the time and space to do that. Time and space, not something I have a lot of. And finally, um, there's a couple of hats. So even though it's supposed to be one thing, it's two things. I wanna make a Dash and Lily hat, um, it, specifically one that looks like this. And I don't think the picture will be very good, but this is Lily from the TV series and the book Dash and Lily's Book of Dares. And I know that Lilia would just absolutely love it because she's obsessed with that book and that programme. So I'd like to, I've already got some yarn, some red and green yarn. Uh, and there is a pattern on Ravelry for a crocheted version, but I want to make the knitted version. And I know what it is. I had a really good look at it. It's just how to get the right size. I don't know how to work out how to get the right size. So I'm at the stage where I'm going to do a bit of a gauge swatch and then work out from there. But maths not my area <laughs> um, and the min beanie by super um, super shiny superhero um, which is um, a hat designed um, inspired by Suga from BTS who is my youngest daughter Phoebe's bias and I've got some purple yarn that I want to make that hat with so that's my bucket list whether or not I'll get around to any of those remains to be seen Final thing to say is don't forget that I vlog almost weekly when I can over on my other channel which is This Little Wonderful Life which is a vloggy channel where it's kind of general life vlogs, daily lives, walks, days out in the English countryside and uh, more recently lots of drawing. I've been doing a lot of urban sketching and drawing and I've been bravely nervously sharing those and people have been very generous with their um, encouragement about that so if you're interested in that kind of thing do hop over and say hello there 
Uh, and obviously there's going to be some tutorials coming up. I've got the um, uh, the mitt, the Heath mitt tutorial that I mentioned earlier will be available soon. My new bag sewing tutorial, really, really simple bag sewing tutorial will be available either before or very shortly after this podcast. And the Little Drop of Wonderful, once the pattern will be released and then later in the year I'm going to do a tutorial as well. If there's anything else you want to see, just let me know. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the end. And my camera's about to explode again. So happy knitting, happy crocheting. I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. Bye.